Good morning, everybody. As you know, I often just state right up front what the message of the day is. And then we flesh it out a little bit. And just to make sure that I and everybody else remembers what it is, I repeat it at the end. So let's just jump right in. Today's theme is this. I am inviting you to begin today, to start now with that positive task or pledge or commitment that you've been meaning to do for a while. Even the fact that it's January 8th, I don't think I've actually said on a live stream yet, happy 2021 to everybody. But this provides an example for me to do exactly what I'm talking about. One, I don't beat myself up for being uh, slow or belated or forgetful and go, oh, how did I forget to say uh, Happy New Year a week ago. I'm such a loser. These kind of thoughts perpetuate the non-activity. They perpetuate the non-commitment, which is exactly what we're trying to reverse today. We're starting now. And our favorite book, the Bible, reinforces this incredibly. When you're hearing Bible stories, when you're especially conversations between the divine and us folk, notice how God, how Jesus, how prophets often speak with immediacy. Example, God is speaking to Abram and telling him that his descendants shall be as numerous as the stars. And he says, Abram, you, shall now, you will now be Abraham. Notice that Abraham doesn't say, I like Abram. He's being told what's new, start now. Begin it this second. Not just this day, not just this hour, now. It's important work, get on it. If God or Jesus talks to somebody about something that they kind of knew to do a year ago, they also don't beat them up and go, hey, why you been such a... Um, uh, delaying, sticking the head in the sand, uh, procrastinating, excuse-making. Uh, no, there's no accusation, but there's also no wiggle room. Let me give you an example of, of Jesus. These people with leprosy, who've had leprosy for years and years and years and years and years, their entire lives maybe, some of them, or, you know, since they were small, they've been uh, cast to the side of society as impure, not allowed to mingle with the greater community at all. And so this horrible life, Jesus instantly heals them of leprosy. Now, he immediately says they need to do something. They need to go to the priest, present themselves, have themselves pronounced healed, and also offer the couple turtle doves of sacrifice, which law required, he, uh, Hebrew law required of them, Torah required of them. And then they've given their turtle doves. The priest has said, the rabbi said they're pure again. They can rejoin society. You do, let's notice what didn't get said. Do not beat yourself up because beating yourself up is another form of delay and avoidance and procrastination. It's more of the same problem, which you know in your own gut is not giving you joy. Now, let me give you just a few little examples. As a Midwesterner, I was raised, as a Midwesterner who you can see is not young, I was raised that you write and give thank you letters or you make thank you phone calls. You express gratitude when you get a birthday gift, when something's done something nice. Err on the side of communi communicating gratitude to others. And you will never regret that, says every Midwestern parent to their child. And I heard that message loud and clear. I have seen people in life who know they owe a thank you letter or some kind of thank you acknowledgement to somebody, and the fact that they've gotten behind on it, that they've gone seven months without writing their thank you letters for all the wedding gifts they got because the task seemed so insurmountable, but actually after a hundred days went by, they think now that to thank the person for the wedding gift when they're almost up to their first wedding anniversary would almost be rude. That's incorrect. Let me give you some Midwestern wisdom. Let me teach you what my mama taught me. Always say thank you. If your thank you is really late, then acknowledge that. Say, dear John or Jane, 
I realize I should have written this letter nine months ago within a couple weeks of so-and-so's and my wedding date, but rather late than never. Everybody on earth understands the value of rather late than never. I've actually seen friendships deteriorate simply because someone was unable to acknowledge something that needed acknowledging earlier, which was exacerbated by the lateness of it. Not only thank you letters, but here's something that might be more important and maybe a message some of you need to hear. That goes for apologies. When we know we have erred and we know we need to make correction to earthly or heavenly forces, if you owe your next door neighbor, if you owe your children, your parents, your best friend an apology, even if you've owed it to them for three months, three years, or three decades, when are you going to do it? Now. Today. That's the point, remember? Start today. Start now. Now is the time. Give yourself, give your creator, give your friend or family member or loved one the gift of forgiveness, which begins with your acknowledging your fault, your culpability, how you fell short of the glory of God. You're going to be so happy. You think, man, that's a good idea. I'm going to think about that all day and do it tomorrow. Well, uh, are you so busy today? Even if you work a 12-hour job, when you get off at 8 p.m. tonight, you've still got an hour to start that letter right now and say, do you know what? As I think about it, I had a, I made a lot of mistakes. I judged you harshly. I was not patient enough. I didn't lis listen carefully enough. I didn't ask for God's assistance to expand my consciousness to help to have a fuller, more complete, and less judgmental understanding of you and our situation. Doesn't this sound nice to get that weight off your chest to get that pollution out of your soul. You're darn right, it sounds great, doesn't it? So, when are we gonna do this? Right now. Start today. You need extra courage? Ask God. Say, God, give me the courage, the strength, the resolve to do what I need to do and to do it right now. Okay, you say, Chris, I don't actually think that when I talk to God, God talks back to me like that. Okay, let me try to give you an alternative. If you think God doesn't talk right back and hand you resolve like, you know, it gets delivered by Amazon, you still have alternatives. You know in your God-centered, created self who or what you can consult to get the extra initiative and resolve to do that positive thing you need to do, to say those thank yous, to say those I'm sorry's, to apologize to yourself that you haven't gone to yoga class for six months. Do not beat yourself up. Don't stand in front of the mirror in the morning going, why have I gained 38 pounds? Why am I such a loser? No, those questions are coming from the dark force. God doesn't want the judgment. God wants the true joyful shift, also called repentance, to positivity, commitment, and action. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it today. We're going to do it right now. When this video ends, you're going to think, hmm, what do I most need doing? I need to do a one-minute yoga stretch and take a big breath of God's air and Holy Spirit and draw it to my heart. And yes, then I'm going to write a thank you letter to my aunt for that strange birthday gift she sent me four months ago. And I'm going to tell her that I really value her in my life. You get me, all right? You're going to do the positive thing, and you're going to do it right now. Praise God. And I applaud your decision to do so. You need help? You can pray to God. You can also call me up or text me. We'll pray together. We can talk about what needs doing. But we're going to do it. We're going to start, start today. Start now. All right. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye.